Hey everybody, this is Narc Shield. My name is Jennifer and I'm back. I was out sick. I was really sick. So there's some kind of icky thing going around and I've been sick. So I am feeling a thousand times better and I decided that I was gonna try to wing a video or two for you guys tonight because I have something going on tomorrow. So I have my cat out. <laughs> I call my cat cat dog because I swear she's like a dog and she's on the back porch. I have a screened in porch and so she's hanging out. So we'll probably hear her and hopefully she doesn't like crawl up the, the door trying to get at something. If she does, I might have to, you know, check it out because I don't want her getting out of the screen. But so anyway, just letting you guys know that ahead. I'm so happy to be back. I wanted to say that, wow, I had no idea when I did the video on Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, it was going to be such a big deal. So let me just explain really quick. You guys know way more than I do. I just happened to come across the uh, recordings when I was listening to somebody else on something. I was trying to learn something and I was listening and then that just kind of came up and I was like, oh, what's that with Johnny Depp? Because, you know, I like Johnny Depp. And so I listened to the one recording and then it did make me kind of interested and when I saw that there was another one I listened and I knew that the recordings from were from some time ago but what I didn't know is how relevant it was right now so man if I I'm not caught up, but you guys kind of helped me a little bit with your comments and I really did appreciate it because it made me really look at this a little bit more. Um, I mean, you're still gonna know way more than I do, I'm so sure, but I did kind of make some notes. So if I don't say your names right, I apologize right out the gate, but I'm gonna try and I did make a couple of little notes just to kind of remind me to say something about a couple of things that some people said. So. Um, I thought I would just kind of go with this. So anyway, if you are here, would you please hit the subscribe button and help my channel thrive? I really would appreciate it. It means a whole lot to me and I'm new at this. So if you'll have some patience with me, that would be fantastic and we can grow together. And so let's get started on some Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. So first off, let's go with these comments. So I wanted to add, you said, that I really liked all of the comments, by the way, and some of them were really long, so I'm not gonna like it's word for word it, okay? But Ed had said something about um, women having uh, like an upper advantage with being able to, um, you know, accuse a guy of something. And what I wanted to say was, I do agree with, uh, with that. And, um, you know, of course, men, narcissistic people um, also accuse us of stuff. But I mean, I've been going through, or I'm, I'm not going through it now, but I've been through it before and I so know. And I also know that how the toxic relationships can go. And I can say that, you know, the, the fights um, can be quite vicious when after over time. Um, so I probably will talk about that in like another video or something, but I wanted to say that I do agree with you on, on that. And I also um, wanted to let you know that we, I always try to tell people this, like there, women are, there's women narcissists too. And women that have, we all have narcissistic traits. You know, there's healthy narcissism and unhealthy narcissism, but there are women that are narcissists as well. And I do think that people need to be aware of that. It's not just guys. And so I, that's what made me a little bit um, it, interested in those um, recordings because when I was listening and I cannot diagnose anybody, these are just my opinions, and I'm just going based on those recordings that I listened to, but I was like, wow, this is definitely, she's reminding me of the narcissist. And if this is true, um, she sounds like she might be and that he might be the victim. However, you never know. And when things come out in court, 
you just never know how things are going to turn out and I don't know enough. So, and I am a Johnny Depp fan. However, I don't know enough and, um, but what I do know and what I've heard and what I've seen, uh, it did sound like she was the abuser. Um, and so we'll just kind of see how everything plays out. You guys are going to know way more than I do, but I did want to make that point to Ed that I do agree with you on the fact that, you know, women can say, you know, hey, these things happened and they are smaller. And she was using that. She was saying, hey, look, you know, nobody's going to believe you because I'm so much smaller than you and she's a girl and this, that, and the other. And I thought that was kind of crappy. And But you know what? She uh, used it to her advantage. Now, whether that's going to help her out or not, who the heck knows? But... Um, I don't know. That's why, we're, that's why, I mean, I speak on narcissism because I'm just trying to get awareness out because I went through so much stuff, um, in my lifetime and, uh, people didn't understand and I didn't even know how to explain it. And so I'm one of those people who comes out and is talking about narcissistic abuse awareness. And so, um, it did make me really interested in this, uh, in these recordings and, Anyway, and I really have enjoyed um, reading y'all stuff. So, okay, Lisa Richards, what did I write? Uh, had great points. Oh, and I did say, and everyone seems to know more than I on this subject. And I really enjoyed reading her comments. She seems to really know a whole lot about it. And so I was like really paying attention to what she had to say. So thank you so much for those comments. I'm gonna put that right over there. On the bright side, on the bright side, she, oh, on the bright side, you did mention that I didn't mention about the, her defecating on his bed. At the time when I did the video, I didn't even know about it. I found that out later. So I was really glad when you mentioned that and I was like, I need to bring this up. Um, so what I kind of read, and so you guys can help me because you know, you seem to know a little bit more about it. I um, thought that he was like gone. Um, now on the bright said said something about that he was in a meeting and had told her he was gonna be in a meeting and she was mad that he wasn't gonna be there. Um, and so that, but then I heard that it was either her or a friend who did it and then I guess the maid had to clean it up or something like that. I was like, that is super gross to like purposely like, you know, go and like do that on somebody's bed. So I don't know who did that, but that was definitely devaluation. That was a devaluation tactic if ever there was one. So <laughs> he was in the black. So there's that black and white thinking, you're good or you're bad. He was bad in that moment. And she or the friend, and if the friend did it, then the friend is the flying monkey uh, and did what Amber wanted and crapped on the bed and basically said, this is what I think of you, Johnny Depp. Horrible. I thought, oh, God. Thanks for bringing that up, girl. I appreciated it. Jay Lee. Okay, so... Um, Blame away from herself. She still need to watch the. Oh, I need to watch that video that you mentioned. You said it was really. I want to. I want to watch that video you mentioned. Um, and I can't remember what it was, but it was something about from Australia or something. So I want. I want to read. I mean, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to look it up and uh, or try to find it and watch that so that I might be able to mention something about it. Um, and oh. Oh my gosh, Jaylee! Thank you so much for mentioning the orb in the um, that video. And then I did other videos after that and there were tons of orbs going on. And it was weird because when I was actually, um, I haven't seen any now, but um, I didn't see it when I was doing that video, but I did see some of them when I was doing my next videos and it was a lot more of them. So I was like so glad that you saw them because sometimes I'm like, is that just me? Like, am I the only person? And I don't want people to think I'm crazy when I talk about that stuff, but it is not the first time that that's happened. I've had pictures and all kinds of weird stuff. So like, thank you so much for bringing that up. I was like so happy that you did. It made me super happy. And I enjoyed your comments. Um, I believe, uh, oh, so I was saying, you were talking about how she was just like rambling on about like, what the heck is she even talking about half the time? She's just going on and on. And that, in my opinion, is basically word salad and you're just filling the air 
and you're trying to take the focus, well, she's trying to take the focus off of herself when he's trying to make her accountable. So when he's pointing it out, like, hey, look, but you know, um, you did this and I'm just doing this, whatever. And he's super calm about everything, which is great. That's how he should be when handling a situation like that. But she's just going round and round and round. And the reason she's doing that is to uh, take the shift away from her. One, because she can't be accountable. She can't look at herself. So that's a way to do that. Two, she wants to confuse him to, um, because that's basically what they want to do. They kind of want to get you off kilter so that you even start to question your own judgment. And you're like, um, because you're confused. So you're thinking about what they said it doesn't really make sense, like, right? And you're like, why is she saying that? And what does that have to do with anything? And then it's like, oh, what a great deflection. I'm not thinking about what I was supposed to be thinking about. I was actually trying to keep you accountable. So I think when you are in a narcissistic relationship and that's happening, you, um, when you know and you have awareness and he was calm throughout everything, it's like, yeah, okay, I hear you, but let's get back to what the point. Because a narcissist can't stand that. She would have just kept deflecting, which is what she was doing through the whole thing. And whenever, and she used different tactics throughout to take the focus off of her. Sometimes she would just ignore things that he said. Sometimes she would answer, but she would blame shift, deflect. Sometimes she would reach in that toolbox and go, you know what? I'm going to throw a fit and be hysterical so that he'll notice that I'm being hysterical and not really pay attention to uh, what he just accused me of. And maybe he'll forget because I'm being hysterical. She tried all kinds of manipulative tactics and she tried everything she could to get control of him throughout the conversation. And I think there were times that she actually thought that she was um, getting control of things and, it, and that would be when she would be kind of calm. But then as soon as he would bring it right back to making her accountable every single time, that's when things would go, all right. But Jaylee, thank you so much for your messages I really or your comments. I really appreciated that. Charlotte. I like your name, Charlotte. I'm in North Carolina, and there is a Charlotte, North Carolina, and I just like the name. So, uh, Charlotte, uh, you said, I see borderline traits as well as narc traits. Um, I appreciated you bringing that up because I noticed that as well. Uh, I was, you know, I can't diagnose anybody, and again, these are just two conversate two recordings that I listened to and I have no idea I'm supposed there's supposed to be all kinds of stuff that's going to be coming out in court and I'm looking forward to that I'm so close to Virginia it makes me want to drive to Virginia and see if I can get in that courtroom but um I saw that because she was talking about every time he wanted to leave and that is a trait of borderline and she was over the top about it and her hysterics and then um so I, I was thinking I would have to know a little bit more but I will say that I did notice that and I questioned that as well and I did appreciate you bringing that up so I'm gonna definitely be paying attention I swear there's a part of me that wants to go to Virginia I don't know if it's gonna be an open case maybe you guys can let me know I have no idea if we can get in the courtroom or not but Probably not, because that's going to be such a high-profile case. But I'm, I'm actually kind of curious and interested. Oh, this one's good. I hope I say your name right. Lainey? I hope I said that right. Lainey. Lainey thought it was weird that she just randomly, you know, as she's talking to him, offered him Xanax. I was like, what a way to try to get control of things. Another way she reached in to manipulate. One, um, doesn't he, or did he have a problem um, with addictions? Um, I don't know if he did, if he does, if he's in treatment, hasn't been, I'm not really sure, but I believe I heard something like that. And so, hmm. you're gonna offer him a Xanax. Okay, so you're offering him a Xanax knowing that or you're accusing him of that, I think, excuse me, allegedly, I'm not even sure of that, <laughs> but it's out there. And um, I believe that maybe that was an accusation or whatever about him, but 
um, you know, because the smear campaign, you're going to bring out all the uglies, right? And so, um, if you're a narcissist, well, I guess, like, people fighting do that anyway. But, yeah, narcissists definitely do that. And so, I was thinking, yeah, what another way to try to get control of the conversation. Let me drug you up and relax you a little bit more. And that way, you are in the state that you're, uh, once again, not really paying too much attention. Maybe you'll be too relaxed and I can take control and uh, get my way with you, at least in the moment. And also, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to have you take this Xanax and then later I'm going to smear you about your um, addictions. Allegedly, because I'm not really sure about that. You guys can let me know. But I think I saw or read that or heard that. Thank you for the comment. Uh, okay, sorry. I know I, I, I know that was bad that I waited so long. I'm not sure if I'm going to say your name right because of the way it's done, but I want to say it's um, either Vitor, Vitor, or Vitor. I, so I apologize. I'm going to call you V. Okay, so um, thank you for your comments. You were talking about, you actually um, commented quite a bit and I enjoyed it so much reading what you had to say, but you had mentioned um, the fog. And so I wanted to bring being in the fog. So if you have been in an, any type of narcissistic relationship, you'll understand being in the fog. And I agree, you were saying that you felt like he was in, in the fog a little bit. I don't know if he is anymore, but he may have been at the time because I know this has been a while back. But how painful when, so you're in this fog because you don't want to believe that someone that you care about would be so bad and hurt you in any possible way and betray you in every way possible. And the thing is, is a narcissist is so afraid that you're going to do that to them that and that they do it to you. They do it to you and they believe that you are going to do that to them or and are doing that to them. That's the story they have in their head because they can't believe that you wouldn't because that's they know how they are. So they believe that because they're that way, everybody's that way. They have a completely different perception than we do, and they're not loyal people. So why would they believe anybody else would be loyal? They're not loyal. They're going to do whatever they have to for themselves when it doesn't matter. It could be in seconds. It could be You could be their best friend, and two seconds later, you know, somebody, the cops show up and say, you robbed something. They're going to be shh. She's, he or she is going to be like, I didn't do it. She did it. They're going to save their tail. So you think you're in this fog like, oh, no, they're loyal to me. They care about me. Yeah, they're loyal and pretend to care about you and do nice things for you when they need you. They're using you. It's narcissistic supply. So um, we're in this fog because we believe in the good in people. We, it's hard for us to believe that anybody would be so bad and do such bad things. And you don't want to look at people and think bad about them. You don't want to think that people are just like have that, like how can you be do that and have no conscience? But narcissistic people don't attach themselves to people emotionally. And it's so crazy. I wanted to talk about this. I can't tell you, I said this, I've said this, I know other people say it, a lot of people say it, I have people contact me on, um, so I have like a, um, a support group on Facebook or whatever, and so people will like contact and they'll say things like, um, I can't believe that, well one, we just can't believe that, that, that they would be bad, right? But it's like, Oh, gosh, wait, I forgot about that one, too, the delusional, the fox. So, yeah. Oh, I wanted to say, I'm sorry. Can I skip? I'm terrible. Did I just, like, whoop, I just did that. I'm such a, uh, tits, I swear. Hang on. Because I was losing my thought anyway. But 
you said something. Oh, you were saying something about um, her being, you thought she was delusional or whatever. And I, I agree that it sounded like that in the those phone calls. So she may be. But also, this is what I wanted to say. We also delude ourselves because we're believing that there are these really good people and that they would never do anything to hurt us. And we can't believe that people would do something like that. And so when the reality starts to happen and we're forced to accept that this is the real person and that we have been dealing with an illusion all along, it's hard for us to do that. We have this logical thinking that's like, I have all this evidence in front of me and we ourselves, we're having a hard time looking at it and believing it. So the narcissist is having a hard time. They don't want, they, they're not gonna accept accountability. They don't wanna be responsible for what they've said and done. They need to blame shift and they need to deflect or do whatever they need to do to get it away from them so that they don't have to face it. We don't wanna face it either, that they've been like that. Because our heart, it's like, who we can't imagine people would be like that because we are not naturally like that. They don't attach themselves emotionally. So, go back to where I was. So many people say, I don't understand how they can just get over me so quickly or how they could fire me when I've worked so hard and I worked for years, staying up late and do, working weekends or whatever, whoever the narcissist was in your life. And you've done so much for them and you, you cannot believe that they would treat you a certain way. Well, it's because your narcissistic supply, you are what HG Tutor, who I talk about on my channel says is fuel you feed the narcissist supply to carry on about what they need to get done that day. Basically give them uh, the power and the control to get through each and every day. And so that's all you are to them. When they don't need you anymore or they find somebody else who's willing to do that and even more, I don't care how much money they've paid you. I, they'll pay you all kinds of money to get you to do all kinds of things and make you feel special. They'll give you free tickets to go see the Rolling Stones, whoever you want to see. They'll do all kinds of things if they have the money. But they'll do all kinds of things for you as long as you are scammering to do things for them and uh, basically uh, also be their flying monkey. Flying monkeys are people that do their dirty work. And so even flying monkeys... They get treated pretty well as long as they just do whatever the narcissist says. And the sad thing is, is that they're so codependent and they feel they really need the narcissist for whatever it is, like the perks, the benefits, uh, to be taken care of, whatever. And the narcissist knows that. They pick people purposely that they know that they can have more control over. And the ones that they can't really have a lot of control over, you might be around for a minute, but as soon as they figured that out, boof, you're gone. They need to get rid of you because you they don't want their facade to fall apart and you are just in the way. They You're like a gnat to them. You need to go and they need the people that they can have surround them and help hold up this kingdom for them because they, they, rule, they want to rule the kingdom and in their minds they are ruling the kingdom and kind of they are in their world. So um, they get over things quickly because they never gave a crap. And we are deluded in the fact, which is trauma bonding. We, I just spit. We, <laughs> we literally are trauma bonded and are like, what? How in the heck did that happen? I didn't see it coming. I thought they cared about me. And we will sit on that, that, those emotions. And the thing about a narcissist is they, they don't care about those kinds of emotions. They don't stick in that. That to them is a waste of time. They need to keep going. So they see that as pathetic, you know, and so they know hey, look, you know what? To wallow in all of that is no good. Like, I need to keep it moving. And, you know, it makes them feel good that you wallow in it. It makes them feel powerful. And so, um, yeah, so literally, um, that's it. That's why. They didn't care. And 
if they have already moved on and replaced you, which most of the time they, I mean, I'm going to say 98% of the time, I swear, I'm just making, I'm pulling that out of a hat, but they have already found your replacement and they've been working on that long before you ever did, uh, before ever you got discarded. And so we'll look and be like, oh my gosh, I was replaced so quickly. No, you were not. They've been working on it for a really long time. They may have hid that from people. They may have, well, they definitely hid it from you. Some people might know about it. Their flying monkeys might know about it, but they need them. They're codependent on them. And so they're not going to say anything. They're going to be people around a narcissist that knows the narcissist really is just that guy. The narcissist can't see that. And they don't think that people think that about them, but they definitely don't think that. They're deluded in the fact that they think everybody thinks they're so great and wonderful. Deep down, there's that vulnerable side of them that knows that they're not all that they say, but they don't ever get in con, they don't, they're not gonna sit long enough to see that. They can't do that. Their narcissistic side is not gonna do that. So they're not gonna pay attention to that and they're going to just go with, I am great, wonderful, everybody loves me because that's the story they need to keep telling themselves. And so it doesn't matter if you're faking it, they don't care, they are gonna believe it. And that's where, so a lot of people will say, especially like, like higher narcissists or whatever, be like, well, they can't be manipulated, but basically, Narcissists are manipulated all the time because flying monkeys are using them and they're lying to them to get the benefits. And then I've seen it a million times. They're talking crap behind the back of the narcissist. Now, if the narcissist ever found out, then that might, they might get a correct, corrective devaluation or something like that, or they might be outsed you know, but usually those people don't want to get kicked out of the narcissist web because they are being taken care of and the narcissist usually knows stuff about them that they don't want to get out or they have some kind of vulnerability. They know stuff. Narcissists are 10 steps ahead all the time, I swear, and they will have the goods and they'll smear you. And the flying monkeys have seen people be smeared and kicked out. They don't want to be that person. So there's a part of them that on a subconscious level even, or maybe even not, is afraid of the narcissist. They don't want that to happen to them. And basically, from what I usually see in my lifetime, a lot of those people hanging from the tree like that are basically using the narcissist. And the narcissist, in my opinion, is delusional because they believe that these people really like them and care about them and think they are great and wonderful. And they're using them just like the narcissist is using them to hold up the facade and do their dirty work. So, I don't know, I just thought I would throw that out there about the fog and the delusional thing. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who commented. I feel like there was, I'm leaving out, there might be other people that I didn't mention. There was someone who mentioned, let me see if I wrote her name down, mentioned some things and, um, Oh yeah, I already talked about her, Lisa Richards. Um, she had all kinds of stuff that she talked about and I could see that she really was passionate about what she was talking about and I agreed with her on a lot of her points and I didn't want to uh, forget to mention Lisa. So there we go, I think I mentioned her a couple of times. Uh, let's see, so I made some other notes. Oh, I don't want my video to uh, go away. So uh, you know what, I might do, let's do part two. Part one, let's go to part two and I'll finish talking about uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and then I've got to go and do some other other videos. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate your comments. I really hope that you'll stick with me and if this is your first time. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and help my channel thrive. I really do. I really love being here and it's going to take me some time, but I appreciate you being on the ride for me, with me. For me. Oh my gosh. With me. Bye. Love you guys.